This is Geometry Chapter 2, Section 2, in which we begin our study of formal logic. When we're doing logic, we're going to have a series of statements, series of sentences, which are called statements, that will either be true or false. When we're talking about whether they're true or false, what we're talking about is their truth value. And rather than write the whole word true or the whole word false, like you typically do on a true-false test, we've just shortened it down to T and F. Now, using logical arguments, you don't want to have to write all the words out to everything you're saying. So we developed a system, we, they, logic people developed a system where we take a statement, like a rectangle is a quadrilateral, and we use a letter to represent it. In this case, we're using P. So now when I write an argument, I don't have to keep writing a rectangle is a quadrilateral. I can just use the symbol P, and the person reading the argument can understand that that symbol P represents the statement. Now, every statement that we have also has something called a negation. Basically, we're taking the statement and putting a not in it. N-O-T, not K-N-O-T. Okay. Negations also have their own truth values. And the truth value of the negation will be the opposite of the original statement's truth value. The symbol we use for negation is tilde P. The way you read this is not P. So given our original statement P, a rectangle is a quadrilateral, not P would be a rectangle is not a quadrilateral. We just add in a not where it makes sense grammatically. Now, typically with your logical arguments, you're going to be trying to put series of statements together, two or more statements, and we're going to combine them either with the word and or the word or. And what this is called when you combine statements together, it's called a compound statement. Just like a compound word is two words put together, this would be two statements or more put together. Now, Compound statements can be broken into two types. If you're using an AND as part of your statement, then what you have is called a conjunction. We're putting it together with an AND, it's conjunction. If it's OR, the mathematical word is disjunction. And just like with true and false, we shorten it down to make it less writing. The symbol for AND is an inverted V looking thing. The name of that symbol is actually AND. And the symbol for OR is a V looking deal. But the name of that symbol in logic is OR. So AND and OR. When you have a conjunction, when you have an AND statement, if you want that statement to be true, each individual part of it has to be true. If I put together a couple of statements, a rectangle is a quadrilateral and geometry is a math class. Both of those things are true, so the truth value of my conjunction would be true. Consider a disjunction, an OR statement. If we use an OR statement, if one part is true, that makes the whole thing true. For a disjunction, at least one statement has to be true. So if I made the statement, geometry is a math class, or I have walked on Mars, my overall disjunction statement is true. Geometry is indeed a math class. I haven't walked on Mars. I think we all know that. But 
if one statement in there is true, that's good enough. So geometry is a math class, or I have walked on Mars is a true statement. Geometry is a math class, and I have walked on Mars is a false statement, because I haven't walked on Mars. You have to have everything true for a conjunction. You only have to have one thing to be true for a disjunction. So let's put a few uh, compound statements together and talk about truth values. I'm going to have three statements here. A triangle has three sides. I'm going to use that as P. Q is going to represent a square has four sides. And R is going to represent a hexagon has eight sides. Okay. We're doing conjunctions on this part. They want me to do the conjunction P and Q. Well, to write that in words, P represents a triangle has three sides. Q is a square has four sides, so my conjunction would be a triangle has three sides and a square has four sides. Part P is true. A triangle does have three sides. Part uh, Q is also true. A square does have four sides. Since both are true, I can say P and Q is a true statement. Consider Q and R. Q, a square has four sides, and R, a hexagon, has eight sides. That would be my conjunction statement. A square does indeed have four sides, that's true. A hexagon, though, doesn't have eight. A hexagon only has six sides, so my conjunction statement is false because both parts were not true. Now compare that with the idea of a disjunction using the same P, Q, and R. And I'm going to throw in disjunctions here, and I'm going to remind you about negation while we're going. We have not P or Q. Well, not P, instead of a triangle has three sides, we would say a triangle does not have three sides. Or Q says a square has four sides, so our disjunction is a triangle does not have three sides or a square has four sides. The first part is false. Triangles do have three sides. So the first part is false. The second part, however, is true. A square does have four sides. Since one or the other of the statements was true, that's all I need to be able to say not P or Q is true. Consider this one, not Q or R. Not Q would say a square does not have four sides. R would say a hexagon has eight sides, so we're looking at a square does not have four sides, or a hexagon has eight sides. Not Q is false. Squares do have four sides. R is also false. A hexagon doesn't have eight sides, it has six. Since both parts are false, the overall disjunction is also false. Not Q or R is a false statement because both parts were false. Now as you're building your arguments, you're going to get into more and more statements going on, so you're going to get into this idea of using a truth table to keep everything organized. And this was supposed to be a fade-out box, but I didn't make it one for whatever reason. That's why the box is around that truth table. When you're making a truth table, you need to cover all your possibilities. Since we have two statements, P and Q, the only options are both of them true, only P is true, only Q is true, or both of them are false. When you have two statements, you're always going to have these two columns, P and Q. If you have a third statement, then you'll have eight. 
things in this in these columns because you would have true 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 false true false true and so on down the line but I think you're just gonna have to deal with two statement ones for now so all your truth tables will start off looking like this now we're making a truth table for P and not Q well I need to get what not Q is if Q was true then not Q would have to be false if Q is false not Q then would have to be true true again leads to false false again leads to true now which two statements are we interested in we're interested in P and we're interested in not Q so and we're doing an and so if either one of these is false then the overall statement is false if they're both true the overall statement is true I have true and false that gives us false because they're not both true true and true is indeed true false and false is false false and true is also false so this gives us the listing of our truth values for the statement P and not Q let's tangle with another one of this type but this case we're gonna do an or we're gonna do not P or Q well again we have the same PQ columns this time we're interested in not P P was true so not P is false and the same thing in the second row P was false so not P is true and the same thing again now we're interested in not P or Q false or true gives us true because at least one was true false or false gives us false true or true gives us true true or false gives us true remember if there's at least one true then it's going to be true one last idea that we need to uh, cover on this video is the idea of a Venn diagram Venn diagrams look like this little guy they have a box to show the whole group of things and then some number of circles overlapping in some cases that show us the different breakdowns of the sets that we're talking about so in this particular picture we're looking at the graduating class from last year at some high school bigger than ours obviously if you've got that many people and we're breaking down how many people went to prom their junior year how many people went to prom their senior year so this circle would represent the people who went their junior year some only went their junior year and some went both years because these guys and gals 123 of them are inside both circles similarly these 25 only went their senior year and these 123 went both these 37 are not part of any circle so they didn't go at all so let's answer a few questions here how many people only went their senior year well these 25 are the only ones that are only inside the senior body, uh, circle so 25 people went their senior year how many people went both years you're looking for where they overlapped these hundred and twenty three went as juniors and also as seniors mm -hmm. how many people didn't go at all the thirty seven that are outside all the circles and then the final question how many students graduated last year we need to add up all the groups 85 who only went as juniors 123 who went as both 25 only as seniors and 37 who didn't go so 270 total 
And as always, I hope if you had questions, you wrote them down. See you.